Hey guys, so if you missed it, we had our first real good look at Dragon Quest XI that's due out this summer in Japan. Still nothing on the United States or West release time, definitely in English or anything. Have not heard anything about that, but we at least got a look at when it's going to come out in Japan. Looks like it's going to be launched over the summer. I'll go more into depth on all the launch details, pricing, all that stuff in Newswave tomorrow morning. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. But I wanted to kind of touch on a few things that have been interesting me for a while and there's been a lot of theorizing about this, and finally, after this event and they released some details, we know that there is more than likely going to be cross-save support between two different systems that are from two different companies. Not only that, but one's a handheld and one is a console. We have the 3DS in one hand and the PS4 in the other, and based on everything they've said and what they've revealed, it sounds like we will have cross-save capabilities between Dragon Quest XI versions on both the 3DS and the PS4. And a lot of people, when I put this out on Twitter, were asking, well, how are they going to do that? Because obviously, save game files can't be transferred anyway. They're on different... Like, they're different systems altogether. They're on different companies, use different servers. You can't cloud save it and move it over. You probably can't even put it on their website and move it over from, like, a USB stick, obviously. So how would they do this? Well, it's interesting because they went ahead and pulled a technique back that was originally done in the 80s on the first two Dragon Quests, or Dragon Warriors as we know it here in the West. So first of all, when I saw their special edition release, which by the way has a 3DS and a PS4 version in it together, that's one of the first times I've really seen that done from two different companies again. It's like Square just pulled Nintendo and Sony together, put them in a special edition, and you can buy them and get both. And it also seems like, in this case, not to get too far off here, but it sounds like Square was a little surprised by the Switch version because they had this idea when it was in development with Dragon Quest XI, which started sometime in 2015, probably mid to early 2015, considering they finished the story and had the first bit of it playable in early 2016 in January. So I think they were caught a little off guard, but what's happening here is there is something called Spell of Restoration. And if you are a veteran Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior player, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So Spell of Restoration was their way of naming a password system that was used way back when, before SRAM and batteries in cartridges were used heavily, because at the time, it just probably wasn't financially feasible to be putting SRAM chips and batteries in these systems and these carts and after a while, of course, you got Dragon Quest 3 or Dragon Warrior 3, Dragon Warrior 4, and so on, where they started using SRAM and batteries as either it got more uh, affordable or the technology got better. And in which case, they didn't need this anymore. Spell of Restoration was used in the first two Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior games as a way to save your progress without actually saving your progress. And what this is referring to, of course, are password systems. So, for example, I played a lot of Mega Man X, just as an example, and you would get a password screen after completing a stage or failing a stage or beating a boss, and it was really annoying because, obviously, it was like a 16-digit code in quadrants that you would write down, and then you would keep it on paper and then put it back in the game when you want to start up again right from your spot. I would have papers all over my house of me writing these digits down every time I finished the stage or completed something, whether it's being a boss or getting a new armor piece, I would write this down. And I would try to write down what I had done at that time. So it was a little confusing, got a little crazy at times too. So what they have done is they're giving you the ability to create a password whenever I guess you want throughout the game and that will then print out more than likely or at least give you an alphanumeric code that you can put into the other system and then start your progress back up from there. So this is going to be a cross save between the PS4 and the 3DS using essentially a password alphanumeric code. And this is just really interesting. I, I really can't remember a time where this was happening between what is essentially two competing companies in Japan because those are it. It's Nintendo and it's Sony in Japan. Microsoft is essentially just non-existent there. So it's these two companies. Now, I will say at that time, or at least when they were probably in development, the 3DS was the king of handhelds, the PS4 was the king of consoles. So you take the best of both worlds, put what is essentially the same game at its core, obviously differences in visuals, effects, and probably some events because they did say everything won't be the same when you move your game from one to the other. So more than likely, events may be exclusive to each one. Maybe there are some things that couldn't quite happen on the 3DS, like on the PS4. And at that time, that's just the way it is. But they also have Street Pass on 3DS, which is not possible on the PS4, so it goes both ways. But what you really need to know is, this was an idea they had in 2015 to give you this game on the go. Now, of course, you have to buy the either buy them separately or get the $135 special edition version. 
But either way, you'd have to buy the game twice. And I think the Switch caught Square off guard because here's a system where you only have to buy the game once to get the at-home experience and the on-the-go experience. I think it's interesting that <laughs> they still don't know when the game is coming out on the Switch and they have a lot of, uh, of PR spin to get around that question when it was asked, specifically saying, we don't know when it's coming out. It may or may not be around the same time <laughs> that the 3DS and the PS4 version come out. I think they wanna get the initial sales from those and then you'll see the Switch version come out because realistically, Dragon Quest XI runs on Unreal 4. We've seen games like Snake Pass make their way directly onto the Switch in a couple days. Now, there are some differences, obviously. There's a lot, a lot of text, probably a lot of sprite work that goes into going from the PS4 to the Switch. But overall, they're running the same type of uh, underlying API with Unreal Engine 4 that should translate very easily and very well to the Switch when compared to other low-level APIs. So I think this is something that Square saw and realized, uh-oh, we're going to try to sell this game twice to people at this point without realizing this, what the Switch is at this, you know. Now, I mean, the Switch comes out, catch them completely off guard. You have a system that you only need to buy the game once as, a, as opposed to buying it twice, once for the 3DS, once for the PS4 to get the on-the-go and at-home experience. Either way, I think it's really cool to see two companies kind of, I don't wanna say put their differences aside, but they both realize, okay, look, Sony is king at the console right now in Japan, which may end up changing sooner than you think with how the Switch is selling. And the 3DS, of course, is king of handhelds. The Vita, while there is still some competition in Japan, nowhere near the level of 3DS, obviously, and, and Square took them both probably together and said, listen, you're gonna have this version, you're gonna have this version, we wanna put you in a special edition together, give the, give the customer cross-save support, what do you think? They both probably said, yeah, let's do it, signed it, and here we are with a special edition worth $135 and cross save between the two. Cool idea, I like bringing back an old idea from the 80s that has now become relevant again. Like who would have thought password systems would have been great again, you know, after us just throwing it aside for save, uh, save support. So really cool idea. I, I like when these kind of things come back around. It's almost like it's cyclical to use this again. But either way, very cool. I really would like a date uh, for a localization for Dragon Quest XI, as most of us would probably like that. But after seeing this, I will wait for the Switch version because I would get the best of both worlds for one price tag and one SKU. But that special edition does look really cool. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm very curious on your thoughts of this cross save that's gonna happen to two different companies. It's really neat. And I will see you guys next time.